Do you think we can talk about how, is this thing on by the way? When, when a bunch of us were working in Amazon, we, and, and the site would go down or there would be a shipping problem or a misshipment or uh, some content that went up that we didn't want to go up at a certain time or something would go wrong. We would write up in the Amazon fashion, they have what they call COEs which I think stands for correction of error. I think a lot of people thought they were cause of error, but I think it's actually correction of error, which is basically like describe what the error was and then the goal of it was to dive deep into how are we gonna correct the error so that it doesn't happen in, you know, a second time. So uh, they were, I think, pretty formulaic at Amazon and I think when we wanted to adopt them here, we wanted to make them a little bit more Loosey goosey, not as much rigid structure. Um, and sort of in that spirit, we decided to change the name to Oh Shit Reports. Still with the intent of like, let's dive deep into what the root cause was so that we can try to fix it so that it doesn't, mistake doesn't happen again. So we've had uh, several of these uh, internally, maybe even more than several, maybe dozens of these sort of internally and then uh, occasionally the problem is like widespread and in public enough that we think you know in the spirit of our transparency of our company we feel like it's a good idea to you know just go ahead and share that with the public and internally we do f try to make them casual partly because they go out to the entire company sees these things so you might have somebody on the purchasing side of the company that's reading a development uh, oh shit report you might have somebody who is on the development team reading something about a purchasing mistake that we made. Like, and so we try to make it casual, just mostly so that they can be understood by larger portions of the company. Uh, let's see, so there were a couple of, I guess the public oh shit reports, like it's, uh, I guess it's easy when the site goes down, especially at like a, during a highly trafficked event like the Fukubukuro that, we're, that we do. I think that's actually our, our most of activity in our forum that's the most uh, uh, active oh shit report that we've ever had was the one that we did for our fourth Fukubukuro where the site was offline for 90 minutes or so. Uh, I like to include lots of charts and graphs and lots of numbers and data about what was happening at the time and what we what we're seeing and like actions that we take and you know the, the Fukubukuro specifically is pretty challenging because it's always like we will identify, you know, we're on Fukubukuro 4, right? And I think I outlined some of this in the Oshit report where it's like the site went down for Fukubukuro 4 because, you know, this particular service fell over. And so we fixed that particular service and uh, that allows you to find out what the next point of failure is going to be. Yeah, exactly. And some of that we found out like when we brought the site back up during Fukubukuro 4. And then we're going to have like new problems that come mostly because we're going to find out what the next problem was, but also because between the time in which we did Fukubukuro 4 and when we're going to do Fukubukuro 5, whenever that happens, uh, there's been a lot of changes that have happened in the site and the site has sort of changed. So we'll find out what the next bottleneck is and we'll sort of fix it. And, and um, I think sort of the knee-jerk reaction is like, well, why don't you just test that all the time? Which I think is fair enough, but also like, it's pretty challenging to build a simulator for Fukubukuro type traffic where you have, you know, lots of people slamming the site and they have coming from all, you know, different geographic regions and uh, some of them are anonymous and they need to sign in and that could be a bottleneck or they're already authenticated and they need to access their payment information to check out and so that's a different traffic pattern. So it's just really hard to simulate. Then we do have some load testing that we do. Um, I think we could probably could do more and uncover some problems, but also it, it, it's like a thing that we do once every couple of months, so kind of don't want to spend an enormous amount of time uh, right. building a simulator. Uh, I do sort of have a concern that if the Fukubukuro goes totally smoothly, it's just going to be like up and over with in 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Um, I think I calculated out what the rate would have been for this previous one, but it's something in the number of seconds before we sell out, you know, a thousand units of the Fukubukuro, then the event's over, and I don't know. I don't know if that's like 
maybe that's a fun experience, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs>